Hello everyone, my name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining me again for another video where today my girlfriend Jen and I will be watching Hereditary. I'm not looking forward to this because I just watched it for the very first time over on Pastor's channel. You can check that out if you'd like. It really scared me. It's the scariest movie I've seen in years. It filled me with much dread and I blame Jeremy for, for bringing that upon me. We have gotten a lot of comments about people wanting us to watch it on this channel. Matt saw it over on Pastor's channel as well for the very first time. Jen wants to see it, so we're going to go ahead and watch it. This will be my second time watching it, and I don't know if I can even get through it again. It was very, very, quite the heavy weight on the soul for me, but Jen is doesn't believe me and is looking forward to seeing it, and maybe it won't phase her the same way it phased literally all of us, but we'll see. So what do you think going into it? So I'm really excited, partly because Holden is so freaked out about this movie. It took a lot for me to get him to actually watch it again. He very much was like, ooh, I don't know if I can watch it. Okay, relax. <laughs> I don't know if I can sit through that again. He was very freaked out. I don't think that a movie could be that scary. Not to say that I don't get freaked out. I love horror movies, it's my favorite like genre, but I do get scared easy. But the way that he's describing it is just like this, the scariest film he's ever seen. I, I mean, that's the impression that I get. So I'm kind of anxious just to see what it's all about. When I asked him what it was about, he couldn't tell me. So I did watch the trailer. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be that scary, but who knows, we'll see. I could I could totally get freaked out by it. But I always like seeing movies like that when a lot of people react to it that way. And I know a lot of people were commenting that we should watch this movie. So we'll see, we'll see if it's scary. Of course, it's at nighttime, so we are gonna keep the lights on. I'm made Holden promise not to leave the room, not to get a drink, not to go to the restroom, nothing. So we'll see if it's everything it's cracked up to be. Matt did not even finish it the first time. He couldn't get through it. He, he got because up. Because it was so scary? He got up and left. I will say, I saw the trailer too. Even the trailer looked like it had some tropes, you know, a little girl drawing and it looked like it might've had some jump scares. It's hard for me to place this. I understand what Jeremy was saying now, that it's more of like this atmospheric dread that you feel the whole time. It's less about trying to jump out and scare you like Michael Myers, like Halloween mm -hmm. was, and more about just this overwhelming feeling of just dread and terror. I would say about the first 30% of the movie, like the first act, I was like, okay, you know, I could see it kind of being like whatever. And then it just gets so much worse as it goes along. It just gets horrible. So I, I'll watch it again with you. Oh, and I will say that the trailers didn't spoil anything. I was actually misled. What I was picturing from the trailer was not what transpired in the movie. So I think that you'll be very surprised. It is a very original movie as well, which is nice because uh, it is horror, but it's it, it was like refreshingly original. I thought from a filmmaking perspective, from a movie perspective, great storytelling. The director and writer fulfilled what they set out to do, which was scare the audience. They absolutely did. So uh, I think that you're in for quite a scary time tonight. I hope it is scary. Like I said, I, I like scary movies, Boston. so um, the scarier the better. And I'm just, I, I really just would like to see, it's been a while since I've seen a movie that like really freaked me out. To me, some of the scarier films was like The Sixth Sense, that that terrified me just because there were so many like jumpy scenes. The Ring freaked me out just because that girl was psycho. And The Grudge really freaked me out too. I have not seen the second one, but it's movies like that that really like freak me out. Anything with like dead people coming back to life, that just freaks me out. So so I'm excited to see where this falls into place along the, the scary spectrum. All right, I, I really don't want to do this again, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know, if you've seen it, let me know. Maybe you didn't think it was all that horrifying. Uh, I actually would think that when I watched it with the guys, all of us together cracking jokes, whatever, it wouldn't have been as bad, but it still was horrible. I know you and I, we joke throughout all these movies we watch, so maybe that'll help, but this is gonna be tough for me to get through twice. So hopefully enough time has passed now and I know what's coming, but anyway, let's get into it, Hereditary. What a cool transition. It's heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. My mother was a very secretive and private woman. She had private rituals, private friends, private anxieties. That's kind of weird. Is that supposed to be her mom? Yeah, she's like an artist or like a, she does like these little model things. You know you were her favorite, right? Even when you were a little baby, she wouldn't let me feed you because she needed to feed you. She wanted me to be a boy. I'm so glad we're watching this in 4K. Does it get worse? 
Are you gonna cry? No. Put that in my pocket. Just gonna save it for later. Hey, Dad. It's a cemetery. What does that mean? Desecrated. Do you think I could maybe borrow one of the cars today? You gonna take your sister? Oh, I feel bad for her. Me too. The other room has a bomb. Sick. Sick. She likes chocolate. She sure does. It's hard to breathe. Are you crying? It's okay, Charlie. We're almost at the hospital, okay? Walk it off, Charlie. It'll be fine. He's just gonna drive on like nothing happened? I just wanna die! Charlie! Oh jeez. That's a very odd way for her to die. Well, like, why was it so elaborate? That's a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> I really need to close that door. It's freaking me out. Okay, well, you go shut it. You want me to shut it? Yeah. All right. Hold in. Hold in. Hold in. This is not... Funny. Okay, I'm pausing it. Hold in. Oh my god. Hold in. That is not funny. That is not funny. Had I gone in there and like investigated what was going on, I would have been slaughtered. No, you're doing fine. Please don't do that anymore. Okay. Holden, I mean it. Okay. I won't do it anymore tonight. Okay. Uh, I'm so glad we're on the same page. Oh, is this a Karen? <laughs> That's what we said too. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, she's nice. Hey, sorry. Sorry, I just, I recognize you from a few- If you need someone to talk to, this poor freaking kid, dude. I know. He's actually not like a bad kid either. It makes it harder for me as the viewer. Got some mail for ya. <laughs> oh. Oh, Annie. Her name might as well be Karen. So it's a little early. Is that her daughter's head? Yeah. Jesus Christ, Annie. Ooh. Yeah, I'm with you. No, it's a neutral view of the accident. I get to go to the bathroom. I'm not going to come out no. and scare you. I'm not going to scare no. you. I'm not going to scare you. Please don't. Can you just fine. wait? I'll be, I, I can't. I'm, I'm not going to scare you. I'm not going to scare you. Oh, here we go. They were performing an open seance. Joni. Joni. She conjured my grandson. Oh, God. Don't do it. No, no, no. Don't do it. Little Light Studios did a whole thing on this. What are you doing right now? Not doing that. Um, Leviticus, Annie. Oh, oh this is Annie. not a good idea. Leviticus. Louie, are you here? It's Grandma. Oh, crap. If you want to try this on your own. Uh, Don't okay. do it. That is not a good idea. St. Christopher, right down the road. We got a great priest, a great she parish. She is about to lose it. <gasps> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah. 
Mom! My friend Joan taught me how to do this. Friend Joan, okay. What friend Joan? Exactly. Crazy Joan. Oh, well, Crazy Joan. Crazy Super crazy Karen. Joan. We've never seen a Karen this powerful before. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Alex Wolf. He was in the Naked Brothers band. Charlie, if you're in this room with us, I'm gonna have us all touch the glass. Uh. <laughs> yes! Thank you, Charlie! That was so This great. is too advanced. Protestants don't know how to deal with stuff like this. You just need to go right to the Catholics. I really don't like that noise. Please stop it. I know you're gonna start doing that now. I'm gonna wait till you're going to the bathroom at three in the morning. Do it not! I no, I will not go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Here we go. John! Oh, Joan's dead. Is she? Wait, this is Joan's place? It is. Is Joan a witch? I would, I would give anything if she peeled it and like it revealed Karen. <laughs> That symbol we've been seeing. Who is Joan? I'm pretty sure that's Helvish, by the way. King Paimon will possess the most vulnerable host. Oh, God, what is it? You gotta watch. So glad we rented this in 4K. It's available on Prime in case anybody wants to watch it for free. Oh god, what is that? Oh, that's her daughter's body? No, that's her mother's body. Oh, ew! Oh, crap. Oh god. Oh my god. Why didn't you call the police? Oh, the police can't help us. Annie, uh, yeah, call the can. police. We're done. Remember, We're John? done with this. Now look at this. See the symbol on the necklace my mom gave me? It's her necklace, right? They're both wearing it, and they're wearing it in every photo. This was painted above the body, right? In blood. <laughs> oh, see all the people? <gasps> Turn on a light and stay where you are. That's the motion sensor. Oh, you see her? <gasps> oh my god! I'm freaking Boston out. Spider Man! Oh my god! Oh, oh my there she goes. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. I recently learned how expensive candles are, so that's like a good like $100 worth of candles. Maybe a little more, like $150. Oh my Put god. Put the window, let yourself on fire. <gasps> She's cutting off her head with one of those piano cords. Oh! Flight! Ah! So he is not dead. He is dead. That little spirit that came into him is Charlie. That's why he did that little click noise when he got up. You are Paimon, one of the eight kings of hell. Hail Paimon! Hail Paimon! Just finished watching Hereditary. What did you think? It was one of the strangest movies I've ever seen. The storyline and like the pivotal points were just really bizarre. Up until the last, I would say 20 minutes, 30 minutes of the movie, it really wasn't that bad. But once it got to the point where he came home after he was like possessed at school, that's when it got pretty intense with his mom playing Spidey in the corners and just, that is, <laughs> Ex 
exactly the type of stuff that freaks me out. Very, very scary. But to understand this correctly, Joan worships like the devil or evil. Yeah. And she did this whole thing meeting Annie on purpose with the purpose of corrupting her son's body yeah. for payment. They said was like one of the eight kings of hell. So the worshippers really just wanted the exuberant wealth because remember she was like going through the book and it was like great riches to the conjurer, whoever could conjure him up. There were so many things upon second viewing that I noticed more than the first time. Like when they first are going to the party, they drive by that post and you see the symbol on the post already. It was like preordained by them or like pre, you know, pre-done by them. Yeah, so like it, everything, you know, her hitting her head was all and losing her head was all a part of it. That's why she didn't die from choking, I guess. So that was all planned out? I mean, from her eating the cake and then leaving the party? I don't know if I'd say that that was like necessarily planned out, that that was like what was gonna happen, but it was they were like cursed to where she would like lose her head on the post. The events just unfolded to where that would be the conclusion, whether she ate a piece of cake or whether they just left the party naturally, she would have lost her head one way or another there. This is what I think. So fill in, why did they want Charlie? Like, is Charlie just somebody like special that they need for whatever religion or evil they pray to? Well, remember at the beginning how, when the, she was like first at that little circle of like losing loved ones, and she said that uh, the mom, her mom, really wanted to be close to Peter and she wouldn't let him, or she wouldn't let her because her mom was so crazy. And then when Charlie was born, she was like, and then I let her get close to Charlie. And so I think that they had like that connection that way. And so I think grandma wanted Charlie to be the one that was like the vessel for, or the one that I guess was payment, but she needed Charlie to be in Peter's body. So that's why they needed to kill Charlie, retain her spirit, eventually kill mom because I guess of the, the hereditary line and then kill Peter to put Charlie's body or Charlie's spirit inside of. And they needed his body because it had to be a male? Yes. Okay. I mean, overall, I felt like it was a good, it was definitely like a good scary movie because it was very different from most of the scary movies that are out there. I mean, it's not like a slasher film. You really have to like follow the story in order to really get it. And there's still little things like you had to fill in for me with the, the post. I, I did not catch that at all. I wonder if like a lot of people, the first time seeing it, if they're able to get that. Because I can't imagine just seeing this and nobody like filling in the blanks with that type of stuff. And a lot of the stuff that was written on the walls, I couldn't even really read or understand. So I'm wondering if those are like additional tidbits to the story too. A lot of the stuff on the walls, I think were like Latin phrases. And there's that part where Steve is like walking through the hall and he's like, what's that smell? Because it was grandma's rotting body in the attic above. I never picked that picked up on that the first time watching because you know, why would you? It, it just not, felt, it seemed like such a throwaway line, but really like everything in it is like purposeful. Mm -hmm. Even the part where Joan is like, Peter, Peter, I expel you. The idea of exercising your own spirit from your own body is something that I had not seen in any movie before either. So that's what she was trying to like get his spirit, like I guess prepping it or priming it to be kicked out. When I first saw her on the street and yelling at Peter, I actually thought that she, like he was possessed and she was trying to help him. Oh no. Um, but when she said, you know, I expel you, Peter, I. I was a little bit like, oh, that's kind of weird. So that threw me off a little bit, but when I first saw her, I really thought like, oh. And I did not think that she was gonna be, I guess, evil or the, you know, the villain. I thought that she was like a very nice lady that was trying to help her, you know, through the grief and everything like that. But yeah, I was way off. We had never seen a Karen as powerful as Joan. She was truly the super Karen. She was great. The whole deception, I think, was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Like, in, just in terms of storytelling, obviously not what happened, but um, her like deceiving um, mom and uh, trying to conjure up Charlie. And then I thought it was a good twist. I kind of was suspicious of Joan in the first place. She seemed almost too nice or like too relatable for mom. Karen's only ever seek to destroy. I'm just kidding for anybody that's actually named Karen that might be watching. I'm just joking around. I think when we did Pastor's video, when I watched it the first time, I rated this pretty high. I think it was like a seven and a half because um, it scared me. It made me feel really uneasy. The part where Charlie first dies and you see him 
like laying down in the bed, just waiting for mom to come and like find her body. Cause he's just like in this state of shock and disbelief and where she's like rocking herself. Like, I just want to die. It hurts too much. Like I just like felt all of that. I rated it pretty high. What would you rate it? It was definitely had some scary moments. Like I said, the last 20 minutes were pretty scary. Exactly the type of stuff that freaks me out in movies. I know you said there was like no jumpy parts, but there really was. And I really like Charlie, the actress that plays her. I think she did a really good job. It's not the scariest movie I've seen, but it it's pretty high up there. I'd probably give it a seven. It was pretty frightening at times. The storyline was just a little weird, I guess, to me. Strange, but it was pretty good. They kind of hit you like two thirds of the way through with like the, or may maybe like halfway through with like, okay, now we're gonna be doing a seance. And then it's just like real, like mm -hmm. a lot of spirituality and like demons. Whereas before it was, we're grieving the death of our grandma. These unfortunate events led to the death of our sister. And that's already horrifying enough. And then to then add on to, you know, where your family is like cursed and we're trying to summon and not only a demon, but like a king of demons, you know, onto your family. So it, it, it does have like that little shift halfway through that I could see them losing some people right there. There was um, a lot to digest. I felt like throughout the movie, I was handed one thing and I was trying to digest that. And then they would do something else, like, you know, the grandmother dying and then the the daughter dies, you know? And then the mom is like slowly losing it. And then you had the dynamic of the father who's kind of just, you know, there. Doing his best. Yeah. And trying to keep it all together. And then you have the, the son who's trying to figure out like what is his role like what's going on with him because I knew he was going to be like an important part of the the movie of course but I just didn't know like how that was going to tie in and of course towards the end they filled in the the blanks with that but I just felt like they kept hitting you with like all right now you got to swallow this now you got to deal with this now you got to you know try and figure this out that was very weird I, w I wasn't used to that kind of dynamic with um movies but like I said it, it was I can understand why it would affect you so much because it was pretty heartbreaking. It was pretty like emotional. Everybody kind of thinks about their life and if they were in this position and how they would deal with it. I don't think it would be like, I wouldn't be able to sleep. Well, We'll see. For different reasons. <laughs> okay, the I'll definitely, um we gotta keep the light on tonight because her being up in the corners freaked me out. Yes, this will be you for the entire night because that, that really freaked me out. And Holden decided to scare me halfway through the movie by going in the other room, shutting the door, oh, and then slamming the door. So if I'm looking a little anxious tomorrow, you'll know why I didn't sleep a wink. Thanks, Holden. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. Helps my channel out a lot. Comment down below, letting us know what you think of Hereditary. Uh, we're wrapping up kind of our October movies, October horror. So next month, we'll hopefully get to watch something not as horrifying. Subscribe if you'd like to see more fun content like this. Consider joining me on Patreon. It's a great way to get early access to select videos like this. Also helps support me as an independent content creator. As always, we appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care. <laughs>